uh, want to welcome everybody to today's webinar that's going to be focused on scrub seal. Uh, my name is Vernon Mortensen. I'm with Ute Light uh, Corporation, Expanded Shale, based in Utah. Our industry trade group is the ESCSI, which stands for Expanded Shale Clay and Slate Institute, and they will be the ones putting the webinar on today. Uh, the aggregate material discussed in today's presentation is ESCS, lightweight aggregate. ESCS is produced at various sites in the United States and Europe. Um, it's created when specific types of shale, clay, or slate are exposed to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit plus temperatures in rotary kilns, similar to what they use in cement kilns. This process causes the gases inside the material to bloat or expand, and it, it makes a material that is a lightweight, high-strength ceramic aggregate that is about 40% lighter than a comparable size of untreated standard weight aggregate. Um, the manufactured expanded shale clay or slate aggregates are used in a wide variety of applications. Some of those include asphalt preservation, internally cured concrete, uh, lightweight concrete, uh, precast or um, poured in place structural concrete, lightweight stone veneer, uh, water filtration applications, um, riding arenas, things of that nature. So there's a wide variety of applications. Those are just to name a few. Uh, our industry association, the Expanded Shale Clay and Slate Institute, focuses on education and the promotion of the uh, benefits of lightweight aggregates around the country. And so we offer a variety of webinars similar to this that provide educational opportunities for people to join in and offer a certificate of attendance for people that need uh, continuing education uh, uh, credits for that. So we'll, we will have a survey at the end of the uh, presentation today that everyone can take. And it's just a few questions, take 30 seconds or so uh, to respond to that survey if you're willing to take time to do that. And to get started with today's presentation, I'll introduce today's speaker and presenter. Uh, this is going to be Mike Mitchell. He's with Vance Brothers, and they have been assisting states, counties, and municipalities with asphalt extending treatments for over 95 years. They're a large, well-known company with a great reputation for pavement preservation. Uh, Mike is a director of sales with Vance Brothers and has a, a broad knowledge of uh, and experience with these treatments. So I want to, uh, without any further delay, turn the presentation over to Mike. Go ahead and get started. Awesome. Thanks for the uh, introduction. Hopefully uh, everybody can hear me and see the presentation. There should be a slide showing on everybody's screen. I see some heads nodding, so that's uh, that's great. I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to uh, discuss scrub seals in particular, uh, what uh, Vance Brothers has found uh, in terms of uh, best practices, when and where we use them, and the benefit they can provide uh, particularly state and municipalities uh, in their pavement preservation portfolio. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started and I know we'll have some time at the end of the uh, the webinar here for some questions and I believe we have somebody monitoring the chat uh, so hopefully uh, somebody will uh, pick up those questions as we go and if we need to answer anything uh, at the end certainly happy to do that. So I will uh, go ahead and get started. So hopefully this uh, works here. It's... All right, so we'll start quickly with just a, a little bit of who is Vance Brothers. And there was already a little bit of an introduction, um, but just a little bit more information. We were uh, founded in 1923 here in Kansas City. Uh, we are a family owned and operated uh, company to this day. Third generation of uh, Vance's are in the ownership group. 
with fourth generation actively working at the company as we speak. Um, in, in the middle of our uh, busiest time of the year, which we're just getting into now uh, for pavement preservation, we have 400 plus employees uh, amongst all of our locations. We are a manufacturer and contractor. Uh, one of the reasons I think that's important um, is we understand a little bit uh, both sides of the equation there, why the a good quality asphalt emulsion is important, um, not just as a, uh, point of pride for a manufacturer, but also with the contractor using it, putting it on the ground and, and why that's important. It also goes the other way. We understand all the uh, intricacies of what goes into a project um, and how important having a, a good quality manufacturer uh, matters as well. So we are the uh, largest emulsion manufacturer in the Kansas City region. We currently have eight locations. Uh, we do ship product all over the United States. Um, and we have a third party accredited lab and R&D department. Uh, that's always important to point out just so people know that um, we're not just uh, tooting our own horn here. We've got, uh, we've got the backing of people that come in and audit our lab, audit our manufacturing and audit our R&D process. So kind of the, the quick agenda of what we're going to cover today is what is pavement preservation? Um, many of you will already have some experience with that, but for those that don't, we'll go briefly into pavement preservation. Then more specifically, we'll talk about what a scrub seal is, when and where to use scrub seals, um, the combination treatments that scr scrub seals are often used in, uh, and then some best practices, and then we'll get into some questions. We'll also, uh, I, I have some videos queued up. Um, and I think when we practiced this one time, they were a little choppy, hopefully they come through. But uh, if anybody, uh, if it's not working technically, then uh, some, I'll have my contact information at the end. I'm happy to share those videos of the process if anybody needs those uh, or would like to see them uh, after the presentation. So what is pavement preservation? Um, according to the FHWA, uh, it is a program employing a network level long-term strategy that enhances pavement performance by using an integrated cost-effective set of practices that extend pavement life, improve safety, and improve motorist expectations. I love our friends at the FHWA, uh, but that sure sounds wordy to me. Uh, so what is, the, what is the industry resource, say road resource? Pavement preservation is a well-implemented uh, pavement preservation approach, achieves maximum efficiency by increasing the average condition of your pavement while decreasing your average spend per square yard. I'm a pretty simple guy living here in Kansas City. That also is a great definition, but I think we can boil it down, uh, reduce it even further. It's a way to save money, keep roads in good condition, and keep the public happy. Uh, that's what pavement preservation is all about when you when you really get to the core of what it is. Um, and so we're going to talk about how you do that really quickly. Uh, the first thing uh, I'll, I'll jump into is this slide is required um, by pavement preservation law anytime you're doing um, a preservation uh, presentation. Uh, so it, many of you uh, have seen this uh over the years and you'll continue to see it going forward but it is a really good representation of how a brand new pavement which is that uh, access on the bottom there zero years when it's first installed assuming it was installed correctly um, it starts off in excellent condition and over the course of its time it slowly starts to um, degrade and that can be for a number of reasons. It can be oxidized by the sun, which uh, makes it a little bit more brittle. Uh, for those of us that may be in regions that have uh, wide swings in temperatures, for example, Kansas City. And if we have anybody from Texas, this year you get to say you went through a freeze-thaw cycle, although that's not very common necessarily for most parts of Texas. Uh, the freeze-thaw cycle can create havoc for your pavement uh, condition. Uh, the core thing, that this graph is really pointing out though, is over the first 75% of a road's life, it drops 40% in quality. Then over the next 12% of a road's life, it drops another 40% in quality. So you're, 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 this is basically an exponential, a reverse exponential curve. You're getting a quick reduction in quality of the pavement. This is assuming no treatment um, over the life of your road. So what does that mean? 
it means that every two dollars spent in that blue section of the graph that first little bit there uh, or every eight four to eight dollars spent in that green category that gr the green uh, bracket saves 12 to 18 dollars uh, in that orange bracket again boiling it down a little bit further it's the an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure um, put it in terms that a lot of people understand intuitively is you know if you've got a, a wood deck on the back of your house if you don't uh, take care of it it's a lot more expensive to replace that wood deck after 10 15 years than it is to get it resealed every two to three years or waterproofed um, the other thing that i really like to point out is once you get to that fair condition that C level condition. And there's all sorts of ways to judge pavement. There's a pavement condition index. Um, there's the A, B, C, D, F rating. Um, but once you get into that fair uh, condition, that's when um, most of the complaints from public, uh, the public citizens start to come in. Uh, typically, uh, complaints aren't coming in at excellent or good. Uh, but once you get to fair, and then obviously as it uh, gets further um, down into poor and very poor, that's when our public works departments, our departments of transportation start to get those complaints from the public about uh, their pavements. So let's get into a little bit about what scrub seal is. That's the reason we're all here. So for those of you who are familiar with the chip seal, it is familiar, it is similar to a chip seal. Uh, we'll talk about some of the differences here in a, dip, in a second. But a scrub seal is basically uh, a treatment that bridges the gap between a chip seal and an asphalt overlay. Um, I couldn't find a great answer into when the first chip seal may have been put, uh, excuse me, scrub seal may have been applied. Uh, but I was able to find this picture of uh, a scrub seal being applied at some point being uh, pulled by a horse uh, on, a, on, a on a wagon. So, or a horse is not on the wagon, a horse and a wagon. That'd be a lot cooler picture if the horse was on the wagon. Um, however, uh, the scrub seals over the course of their life have been designed for use as both a wearing course on the top layer of um, pavement, as a combination treatment, which again we'll talk about here in a little bit, as an inner layer uh, for applying new pavement on top, and then also uh, just for use as a mass crack sealing uh, option. And we'll talk about where maybe that uh, comes into play here in a, in a minute too. So what are the issues that a scrub seal is used to address? First of all, fatigue cracking, longitudinal cracking, transverse cracking, uh, roadways that may have a loss of friction, um, which obviously any uh, Department of Transportation can tell you that that's a, that's a really uh, big safety issue. And as a lot of uh, municipalities, DOTs go to Vision Zero or start to implement Vision Zero, so the loss of friction is going to become uh, even a, a bigger component. Um, it can also uh, address uh, raveling, light raveling, and severe oxidation. Uh, a couple key points that I think are worth um, pointing out. A scrub seal can reduce the life cycle costs of, uh, of a roadway compared to a, a new hot mix asphalt by about 48%. It's also uh, great for reducing greenhouse gases by 51%. You can return to traffic. This is a, this is a great point for uh, those places that maybe have are using it on county, county roads, county highways. The return to traffic in as uh, quickly as one hour you get an additional six to eight years uh, out of your road surface when, uh, when using a scrub seal. And another point uh, with regards to safety is that uh, scrub seals can be striped the same day. Uh, so you don't have unmarked um, roadways and uh, John Q Public is trying to figure out where, uh, where the lines are and, and where they turn and all that stuff. So they can be striped the same day. So let's get into just the generic basics of a scrub seal. So what are the materials used? Typically, um, the most common is a polymer modified asphalt emulsion. Here in the Midwest, Kansas City um, area, we, we refer to it as a CRS2P. I do know that uh, across our great nation, there are a number of different specifications and nomenclatures used. Uh, so in your area, 
you may refer to it as something different, but it still may meet what we would call a CRS2P specification. Um, typically, that, that uh, emulsion is applied at uh, 0.18 to 0.22 gallons per square yard. And here's the reason we're talking about it um, in this group is because the aggregate that you're using, um, we refer to it here locally, and I don't know if this is a full industry-wide term. Corey, I can see it, so maybe you can nod your head if it's accurate. Uh, is Haydite considered a industry-wide term, or is that local to uh, Kansas? Okay, sounds like that's a industry-wide term. It's a very lightweight aggregate, um, has a pretty specific gradation. Uh, and I will certainly defer any questions on the aggregate to our friends that uh, produce it, sell it, manufacture it. Uh, but it's a it's a great quality uh, manufactured or a product. And we get into some of those reasons here in a little bit. But uh, one of the main reasons, two of the main reasons are the lightweight um, structure of the aggregate both reduces transportation costs uh, and greenhouse gases along with that. But also, uh, because it is lightweight, you're dealing with a lot less uh, issues in terms of if a rock is kicked up in terms of damage to windshields, chipped, chipped windshields, et cetera. So the equipment used to install a scrub seal. There, I'll have some pictures and some videos here, so uh, we'll, we'll show that here in a second. But it's a, it's a distributor with a broom attachment, a chip spreader, that follows the distributor, um, a pneumatic roller. And just as a generic cost, and I'm always leery to put this out there because I know that this, especially on a national, but I'm gonna, I'll put it out there regardless. Uh, uh, approximately $1.30 per square yard is what uh, we're seeing for a generic pricing on an install basis for a, a scrub seal. Certainly that, that mileage may vary depending on what part of the country you're in, uh, how far away you are from uh, a producer of both the emulsion and the uh, aggregate. A, a number of different uh, variables will go into that. So here's a picture of a broom attachment. This is uh, one that's folded up and it's in the staging area. Uh, you can see those brooms that are not facing the ground. They will, uh, when, if you're applying emulsion with the full width of the broom, then you would obviously uh, fold those down and uh, they would make contact with the emulsion and push the emulsion into the, the cracks and crevices of the pavement. Important factor to those brooms is they also pull pools of material out. So you're not getting um, deep pools of emulsion. Here's a picture of uh, a broom that has been um, ready. You know, it's obviously being utilized. You see, you can see you've got multiple um, layers of broom, for lack of a better term, tiers. And you can see that pool of emulsion in front of that first broom uh, or the first section of broom. It's getting uh, sprayed out of the distributor. Then it is being uh, brushed down with the broom attachment and then that final broom attachment comes in and makes sure that we don't have uh, too thick a material put down. So here is a, a quick video. It's about 60 seconds, maybe 90 seconds. Don't be alarmed if you don't hear any audio because there is no, uh, there's no music behind this. Let's see if uh, we can get this to play correctly. Hopefully uh, it does. And again, if not, um, shoot uh, somebody an email or something and we'll make sure we get it to you. Uh, but hopefully it runs smoothly. So this is a, a roadway uh, prior to application. Here comes the distributor truck spraying the material. Here's the broom attachment, pushing the material down into where it needs to be and making sure you get some even distribution. We'll follow it along here uh, for a few seconds. And then following up behind that, and, it, and, and really one of the key components to a scrub seal or a chip seal, as, as most people can tell you, is you don't want there to be too much distance between the chip spreader and the uh, distributor applying the material. You want to get that, those, those chips in there before um, the emulsion has a time to start its breaking process. And then the final component is the pneumatic rolling. Um, 
you want to get that rolled very quickly to embed the rock into the emulsion. Um, the reason we use a pneumatic roller is, whoop, looks like it's going to try and play again here. Let's go ahead. Uh, the, reason, the reason we use a pneumatic roller is because a steel drum roller uh, would fracture the rock uh, or break the rock. So let's talk quickly about when and where. Um, there's always, there's a saying in the pavement uh, maintenance industry, which is there is really no silver bullet solution that covers all, um, all issues in pavement. So it's really using the right treatment at the right time. And so let's talk about the when and where. Good candidates for a scrub seal would be cracked pavements, moderate to highly cracked. And I'll actually have some pictures here of good candidates uh, that showcase this. Oxidized pavements, um, maybe they're good uh, structurally or even on the surface, but they are oxidized. And then pavements that have been smoothed out uh, either due to uh, traffic over the years, or maybe uh, they were installed uh, in a way that they just didn't have the friction that they were trying to achieve. So where wouldn't you want to use a scrub seal? Um, scrub seal is a surface treatment. It's not designed to address structural damage. So roadways that have base issues or sub-base issues where they're, um, there's base failures in particular, a scrub seal is not a good option there. Um, this is really, like I said, designed to be on the surface level. It would not solve those issues, and we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't promote it for use there. That's uh, that would be uh, that would be a blemish on scrub seals if we started promoting it in in the wrong circumstances. Another place that scrub seals typically shouldn't be used, well, really shouldn't be used at all, are rutted areas. They're not designed to fill rutted um, pavements. And again, you would not get the performance you would expect out of it, and it won't fix the rutted uh, issues. So that's good candidates, bad candidates. What about road types? We've seen scrub seals used um, on all four listed here, as well as in some other areas. We've seen scrub seals used in HOAs um, as, a, as a pavement preservation treatment, um, even uh, city streets. Uh, so uh, really, as long as the uh candidate is a, in good structural shape and we're uh, trying to address one of those three issues mentioned um, there's there's really some good candidates uh road types that it would work just fine for so everybody on this call if you've been in the pavement preservation uh industry you've seen the black snake road uh, and that's depending on um i i don't have a before picture of this road but it is, uh, if you zoom in on some of these, which I can't do right now, um, it's tough to justify that crack seal was actually filling some cracks where some of this uh, crack fill has been used. I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus, but uh, it is sometimes um, the, the way you pay or uh, if you're a DOT or a, or a municipality, a public works director, will affect how a contractor will approach a project. And so if you're paying by the pound uh, for this project, it, the contractor has a um, financial interest in putting down more material. Uh, so, but let's just say for a second, this was an honest job. There was that all of those uh, black snake areas do have cracks in it. Um, what maybe would be a better option here is to use something like a scrub seal as a mass crack sealing treatment. Uh, similar to chip seals, they do offer crack sealing um, as a performance benefit. So, I think this is a great picture, and, and you can see, for example, in the forefront of this picture where there was, this is a road that had um, mass cracks issues, uh, and then about a third of the way up, or excuse me, two-thirds of the way up at the, at the top of the picture, you can see where a scrub seal was applied. And you can, uh, again, I recognize that maybe it's hard to see, but you can see that uh, there's really little little to no cracking coming back through after using scrub seal as a mass crack sealing treatment. I'll have a few more pictures um, before and afters that may be really helpful as well. So uh, here is um, uh, some examples of before and afters. 
So this was uh, a wearing surface uh, before. And I know that that's hard to believe that that's the same road because the picture's not in the same spot, um, but that is the same road. So you can see the difference between the, uh, the surface of with the cracks and then after a scrub seal. Let's do another before. This one will be a little bit easier to believe. So you can see the significant cracking um, in this, in this uh, roadway. Now here's post scrub seal. And I acknowledge that if you look really closely, you can see the ridges to where um, those cracks existed prior to the scrub seal. But what you don't see are the cracks going through where water can penetrate and get down in. So let's go back, uh, show the before again. And then there's the after. Pretty significant change in, uh, in surface uh, integrity there. Here's another one, um, a before. And then an after. Uh, another place that scrub seals have been used pretty regularly are um, conflict areas. You know, if you've got, for example, a turning area that you want to make sure you have a high friction level to avoid um, potentially any conflict between vehicles. So you can see in the after picture where that turn is. But here's the before again. So you can see the, the difference in quality of the pavement post treatment. So let's talk uh, briefly about combination treatments. Um, and I see some questions coming in in the chat. I think I see some answers being posted there. And if not, I'll try and uh, revisit those at the end. So keep asking and I'll answer all the, all the ones that I'm qualified to answer. And we'll get back to you on all the ones that I'm not qualified. So what is a combination treatment for pavement preservation? Basically, it's using multiple treatments to achieve um, an even better final product or to uh, address multiple issues. So one that's really popular, which is the one that's in the picture, is a scrub seal and a fog seal. Um, fog seals, for those that are familiar, are, are a thin application of typically an emulsion. Um, and they're really only designed to treat uh, oxidation. And so a lot of times what happens with a scrub seal or, or a chip seal is that the public perception is, hey, where'd my nice black asphalt go? Uh, because the rock is exposed and a lot of, it, it should be exposed if installed correctly. And so what a lot of municipalities have found is if they follow up a scrub seal or a chip seal with a fog seal, it gives that road that nice black look that people are expecting when they no get the notice on their door that, hey, next week your, uh, your roadway is going to be getting um, uh, some sort of asphalt surface treatment. Scrub seal plus a micro or a slurry, that's considered what, uh, what we call a cape seal. Uh, there's a scrub seal as, and then a thin lift hot mix asphalt put on top of it. And then there's uh, a scrub seal with the traditional hot mix overlay um, and that's uh, in referred, that's what we talked to with the inner layer earlier, uh, where it's called a stress absorbing membrane inner layer. Um, it, it seals the cracks so that you get less uh, or reduced reflective crack cracking coming back through once you put that overlay on top. And then um, this catches some people by surprise. You, there are places that do a scrub seal and then a chip seal on top. Um, not much different than if you were to do a double chip seal. Uh, for example, but you're getting that scrub seal on the bottom layer pushes with the broom attachments, pushes the uh, material into the cracks a little bit better than just spraying it. So this is a picture of a cape seal. Uh, so you can see you've got the scrub seal um, applied already, and then they're coming back through with uh, either a sl slurry or a micro to give it uh, a little bit more of a wearing course, as well as uh, get achieve that uh, nice black look that you're that you're hoping to get. Uh, there should be a video. Or, uh, I've got a video coming up here. But what is uh, reason I want to talk about Cape Seals in particular is because of just how uh, popular they are. Uh, so what does a Cape Seal in particular address? Moderate cracking, just like a scrub seal would. Again, loss of friction, oxidation, raveling. If there's a uh, roadway that has a lack of uniform color uh, for restriping and safety purposes, 
and some key points to a, a Cape Seal. You reduce the life cycle cost by 25% compared to a hot mix asphalt uh, overlay. You reduce your greenhouse gas um, by about 30%. And, and th these numbers come from the Asphalt Institute and can be found on roadresource.org, which, which is a great um, industry uh, resource for people. Uh, so just so you know, these aren't numbers I just made up. They're actually uh, pulled from reliable sources. With a uh, Cape Seal, you can return to traffic within one to four hours per treatment. Um, and that a lot of that will depend on if you're using a slurry or a micro on top. And then you can expect to add anywhere from eight to 10 years of lifespan to your roadway uh, with a uh, properly applied Cape Seal. So I've got a little video here that shows a Cape Seal. One uh, one word of caution, because I don't have a great video of a Cape Seal with a scrub seal going down applied first. I used um, a, a Cape Seal that shows a chip seal. Again, you would be using a, a, a smaller aggregate and the emulsion would go down uh, differently uh, than in a chip seal when used as a Cape Seal. But I did want to provide a video of what a Cape Seal um, treatment would look like. So let me hit play and hopefully it comes through okay as well. So you can see they've got a black snake road. They really probably should have used a scrub seal to mass seal coat or mass uh, crack seal that. You've got the chip seal uh, going on top with the distributor spraying the emulsion. In a, in a scrub seal, they would have obviously a broom behind that pushing that emulsion, making sure you get uniform coverage. The chip spreader comes in immediately behind, spreads the chips. And then you would get a pneumatic roller on top of that. And here is a micro going down on top of the chip seal after it's had time to, to fully cure out. A little bit of a close up here. So you can see a little bit of the before and after. And here is a, a before and after. Um, this is the chip seal prior to microsurfacing. And in a second, here we go. This will two weeks later, they've uh, applied the microsurfacing. So you can see the difference in the texture of the road, the, the color of the road, et cetera. And those are just some comments, obviously, that I mentioned as well. So here's some best practices you should be uh, following, uh, whether you're doing scrub seal by itself uh, or in some sort of uh, combination treatment, warm, hot, dry weather is best for any asphalt pavement preservation treatment. Uh, I shouldn't say any, uh, there's always an exception to the rule, but most. We ask for 50 degrees uh, and rising. There should be no rain in the forecast for 24 hours minimum. One thing you always want to do uh, with the scrub seal is you should do a sweep of the road afterwards to make sure um, You've got the emulsion completely set. You don't have any loose aggregate. Uh, new asphalt or asphalt patches should be given 60 plus days to cure out. Uh, you don't want to uh, apply a surface treatment on top of brand new asphalt. You would uh, The asphalt wouldn't have a time to breathe, as we like to say, and, and it would uh, remain soft. You wouldn't get the uh, the components out of it needed for it to really fully cure out. Depending on the road condition, uh, that application rate that I mentioned earlier of 0.18 to 0.22, you may need to um, bump that up a little bit, depending if there uh, are significant cracks. And then obviously, uh, as a contractor that's been doing this for 95 plus years, we are going to point out how important it is to hiring an experienced contractor. Um, it's always easy to watch a video and think, oh, that looks easy. Anybody can do that, but uh, it's not that simple and uh, that should be taken into consideration. So I am certainly open to questions and I don't know how we want to handle this. Um, if, if we have some unanswered questions in the chat, we can take those. If not, um, if people need to mute, unmute and ask questions, I'll, I'll answer the best I can and anything I can answer, I'll either uh, pick to Corey or Vernon, or I will uh, get you an answer afterwards. And I, and I apologize, Sean Brost is our um, 
he oversees our division that that handles scrub seals and chip seals he's unable to make it as we're kind of getting startup so any uh, very technical or application related questions i may just have to uh come back to you with an answer but if anybody has any questions um I'm mike you might want to uh take a few of the ones in the uh chat box if you're able to see those i've tried to respond to a couple of them but uh you, if you want to touch on some of those first yeah. and then we can open it up if anybody else has something they want to ask so richard asked are scrub seals done with or without aggregate um the emulsion is sprayed with no aggregate in it and then obviously the aggregate is uh, added post emulsion being sprayed and applied um, and to embed in the uh, in the asphalt or in the into the emulsion what is the recommended rutting limit for scrub seal I don't have an actual full-on answer for you there, Andrew, uh, but I can get you one. I can tell you, you don't want much, if any, rubbing. Um, the emulsion would pool up uh, and the aggregate is small. The grade, it's a small gradation and it's lightweight, so it's not designed to handle rubbing. Uh, Wes Root, which I think, Wes, you're here local in, uh, in our area. Well, somewhat at least. Um, what is the rate of one eight chips per square yard? That would be a question that Sean Bross would know like literally off the top of his head, but I will get that answer for you, Wes, and get back to you on that. Um, I will say that uh, different municipalities have set different ranges, but I wanna make sure um, I get you a, an exact answer. So uh, let me write that down, uh, pounds per square yard real quick. all right let's keep moving through can you describe better the aggregate specs i will actually if corey is uh, able to maybe take that he could talk about um the the aggregate specifications or or vernon for that matter uh, and and what the specs of the aggregate are <clears throat> Uh, Corey, you got any comments on there? The I posted on there uh, that you're primarily focusing on this presentation on using a fine graded lightweight aggregate in the scrub seals, although uh, we've seen, and I'm sure you've seen too, that a scrub seal could be performed with a larger size uh, chip, like a 3H chip, etc. In this presentation, we're mostly focusing on the scrub seals with a finer graded aggregate. So like in our case, you would have, you know, almost 100%, if not 100% passing a number four and then uh, a number eight as well and retaining on a number 16 and a number 50. So it's, I think you guys refer to it out there as a one eighth by zero. So we're, you can see we're kind of talking about finer, a smaller gradation of aggregate here. Is that what you what you would say, Corey? I think so. I don't know if my muting is working or not, but uh, uh, yes, we we classify that as eight by zero uh, out of the Buildex plant, and I think a lot of other, uh, you know, I think that's been that's kind of an industry standard as well, Vernon and and Mike. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Great. Hopefully that answers the uh, the question. Um, in, I'm gonna and I apologize if I get any anybody's name wrong. Uh, Eugene um, asked the question: Should thermoplastic pavement markings be removed prior to scrub seal? Yes, um, you should remove those prior to scrub seal. Uh, Angela asked: How much time in those before and afters? Uh, some of them were uh, shortly after the scrub seal was completed uh, and had a lot uh, time to cure um, some may have been even before traffic was allowed back on them and then uh, as the one video said it's it, some of them were also a couple weeks after so there's some variability there um, peter says i did not get a reason why light i assume lwe's lightweight aggregate should be used or even better than normal weight aggregate um, and vernon i think you maybe answered that a little bit um, you know, one of the a couple of the main reasons right out of the gate are the ability um, transport costs are reduced with lighter weight aggregate. Uh, you get um, 
a potentially a better surface if uh, if applied correctly with a smaller gradation, a smoother, you know, in terms of uh, the appearance of the surface than than using the bigger chip rock. Um, there are. I'll, I'll throw I'm one in, Mike, if you want. One one of the main reasons that our customers out here use the lightweight aggregate is just that they get a superior bond with it compared to uh, standard weight aggregate that oftentimes will have kind of a fine layer of uh, silt or silica type dust that prevents it from having a firm bond where the the ESCS aggregates tend to be more um, porous even if it's a micro pore that you get a better bond with the emulsion and have uh, much less peeling or, or stripping off the pavement if you will and then you touched on skid resistance and skid ratings Obviously, with that porosity, as it opens up a new microsurface texture, you have um, much higher skid ratings with the lightweight aggregates than you do with your standard weight aggregates as well. And, and, and just appreciate general, general and, dust. Go ahead. Yeah, and just general dust, lower lower dust for the uh, for the project itself. Right. Wes, Wes, if you're Still on, I got an answer from Sean Brost via text. Um, if you saw me looking down at my phone, I'm not uh, ignoring everybody. I was trying to get an answer real quick. He said that he typically sees eight pounds per square yard. Uh, so hopefully that gives you of aggregate. Cody Thompson asked, what is the difference between a fog coat and a micro seal? Uh, that would probably be a whole different uh, presentation, but I'll give you a quick, the Reader's Digest version, uh, Cody, and there's there's some great resources at roadresource.org um, that you can look at. But a fog seal is really just a thin uh, layer of a sprayed on emulsion, um, doesn't add any sort of structural integrity, doesn't, doesn't have any aggregate in it. And a microsurfacing is laid down differently. Uh, you, you have actual aggregate uh, in it, um, rocks, not just uh, um, sand or anything like that. So there is a there's a significant difference there. And and Cody, feel free to reach out to me, and I can send you some links if you need to. Um, and I apologize, Dar Darumvir uh, is asking for a few links of reports, paper, case study on scrub seal and best practices. Uh, I know Darmbeer, there are some uh, FHWA um, guidelines there. If you also uh, look for the NCAT, uh, NCAT is a, a research institute. Um, I think it's the National Center for Asphalt Technologies. It's a research institute in uh, in Auburn that uh, has some good information, um, and I, I believe they have some case studies on use of scrub seals. And then. Valued customer. That's a great name, but I, I know who it is. It's Alan Sharkey. Um, Alan, uh, I'm happy to answer these questions. He said what he was he jumped on late or wasn't able to get it set up right. What surfaces is this best for? What surfaces will it not work on? Just to reiterate, this is for um, oxidized pavements, pavements that have um, surface cracking, uh, that have uh, that need uh, fr that have reduced friction levels. It is not for pavements that have base failures, sub-base issues, um, or uh, areas where, uh, where rutting, sorry, I was, that word was escaping me for some reason. Rutting exists, it will not fill in rutting. And then Caesar asked, what is the recommended curing time before traffic? In the right conditions, you can be back on a scrub seal in as quickly as an hour. Um, and some states, uh, especially DOTs, will, will ask for additional time or um, uh, depending on their environmental conditions or their research. Jesus asks, do you have to measure the amount of binder in the mix microns? Any recommendation? That's a question that I don't have the answer to. Fully acknowledge, I, I, again, um, the emulsion is a fairly standard emulsion, a CRS-2P, or again, that's what we call it here in our region. Uh, your mileage may vary on what it uh, what it's called there. Uh, one thing I would recommend um, is, uh, do you have to, and then I think the follow-up question was film thickness. It's not usually applied by mills, it's applied by um, gallons per square yard. 
Oh, Alan clarified, is it only for asphalt? Will it seems like it will bond to anything? I don't know that there's been any research on it bonding to um, uh, concrete or other surfaces. Uh, so I don't know that I have a great answer for you there, Alan. I apologize. Darum Beer asked, can wrap aggregates be used in scrub seal? I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I've seen them used. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I, I, scrub seals are typically a pretty fine gradated um, aggregate. Uh, so I think that would probably be the defining factor. Chris Cooper, does the absorption of the lightweight aggregate cause a significant change in the amount or rate of emulsion used when compared to other aggregate with a lower absorption? It potentially could, and that's something to take into consideration. If you're used to, your area is used to using a highly absorptive aggregate and the lightweight aggregate you have available to you does not have absorption rates anywhere near it, you will want to take that into account when putting your um, quote unquote mix design together. And, and make sure that you're getting the correct amount and, and uh, getting the rock embedded properly into the asphalt emulsion. So I think that catches us up. Um, I will click off the chat box here. Did, are there any other uh, questions that people may have or did, uh, did we cover everything? No other questions right now? Going once, going twice? I'll go one more slide here in case anybody wants it or wants to reach out. Um, there's my contact information. Happy to chat, talk to you about uh, um, our experience with scrub seals. If you need some advice, even if you're not in our, our area, we'll, we'll happily talk with you. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to uh, to hopefully provide some knowledge. I hope people gained, uh, gained some information from it. Uh, you're welcome, Todd. And uh, I'll just stay on till Vernon uh, or Abigail or Corey closes the, uh, closes the presentation. I was just going to mention that uh, I want to thank everyone for attending. We've got a lot of attendees that uh, got on. And as we continue to do these through the ESCSI on pavement preservation and other topics. Uh, hopefully we'll continue to see more and more people join, but uh, just to wrap things up, I'll say that I wanted to say on behalf of the ESCSI, Expanded Shale Clay and Slate Institute, we want to thank everybody for attending. Uh, hopefully everyone found it educational and useful. It seems like they did. There are a lot of good questions. Uh, this is the second time I've seen Mike uh, present this information and if you work with pavement preservation, uh, very good information, uh, usable content that can be taken back and put to use. So um, as I mentioned, we'll continue to offer more webinars in the future, the uh, training opportunities. And so if you haven't done so already, please uh, subscribe, sign up for the ESCS e-newsletters at escsi.org. And that's all we have today. Thank you all again for attending and hope to see you again on a, a future training webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.